it's really lovely to see so many people um and welcome to the Transpennine Route Upgrade Community Fund briefing um as a Greater Manchester based organization I can I've seen some names and some organizations that I recognize from Manchester but it's really lovely to see lots that I don't recognize from across the route over to York um I'm really really excited to be able to take you through the details of the fund today um it's been a long time in the planning and we feel like we've been talking about it a long time and it's now real and it's great. So my name's Helen Butler and I'm the Grants Programme Manager from GMCVO. Today you'll also hear from my colleague Vicky, who's a project Hi. officer. Hi Vicky. Um, and as well, Becky and Jamie from the Transpennine Route Upgrade. So Hello. some of you, sorry, <laughs> thanks Jamie. So some of you will be familiar with GMCVO. However, for many of you, you've probably never heard of us before this briefing or getting an email about the community fund. Um, so I thought I'd let you know who we are. So we're delivering the grants programme on behalf of the Transpennine Route Upgrade. And we are a membership organisation. We're co constituted as a charitable company with a voluntary board. Our focus is on social and economic inclusion across Greater Manchester. We're also a social investor, we distribute grants and we carry out policy and research work. We also have a conference centre which operates as a social enterprise and that helps fund our work as well. So we um, work to drive economic and social inclusion through effective collaborations and supporting other organisations to achieve their goals. And yeah, we're really pleased to be delivering Amy? this. Yep, hi there, you okay? I've just started if you just join in. Um, Can you and I'm hear just... me? Hello, yeah. Have you got a question? Okay. If you've got any, any questions or anything, just pop them in the chat. Um, there is time at the end to go through questions as well. So... Um, in terms of today's briefing, our aim is to me? provide you... Hi, is that David? Um, so, yeah, to, the aim of today's briefing is to provide you all with the background to TRU and the TRU Community Fund, the aims of the TRU Community Fund, the key dates and process for applying, information on how much can be applied for and what the funding can be used for, the eligibility criteria. We'll also run through the application questions and some guidance on what we're looking for in those responses. And then at the end, there will also be an opportunity to ask any questions you may have. So you can pop them if you, in the chat if you want, or you could, if you think of them as we're going along, you can just hold on to them till the end. Um, so I'll hand over to Jamie from TRU now to talk more about TRU and how the Community Fund came about. Hi, everybody. Yeah, my name is Jamie McKinnon. I'm here with my colleague, um, Becky Richardson, uh, representing the Transpennine Route Upgrade. Um, and we're delighted that so many people have registered an interest and have joined this call. Um, we're excited for, for this programme moving forward. Um, my purpose, as, as Helen just said, is largely just to give you that context of who we are and kind of why, why we're doing this. So, TRU, it's a, it's a very big program, but it's also a big program that many people may not have heard of. So what we've got is a little video, which I'm just going to ask Vicky to play, and then I'm going to talk you through the program. Rail up north is transforming, thanks to people like you. The local engineers working round the clock, come rain or shine. Relaying tracks, upgrading stations, and electrifying lines listening to line side neighbours and getting stuck in with local causes. Because this upgrade is about more than just sleepers and ballasts. It's about the North itself. A better railway means new jobs and opportunities, more ways to live it up and more places to settle down. It means parents can get home in time for longer bedtime stories. And the air is cleaner in our towns, cities and windy moors. Of course, change like this doesn't happen overnight, but we think it's well worth the wait. Every day, we're working towards crucial route upgrades, making life better for countless communities and ensuring there's no better time to be a northerner. 
Trans-Pennine Route Upgrade, on track to better lives. Wonderful. So, oh, I've got again. Uh, yes. Next slide, please. Yeah. So hopefully many of you are familiar with the Trans-Pennine Route Upgrade. Um, Hopefully, you'll have seen adverts in train stations, on Channel 4 and ITV, and maybe on social media. Um, and we're a program that's been going since 2019. And we have the core objective uh, to transform the journeys across the north from Manchester, Victoria, through Huddersfield, Leeds, right the way through to York, um, through essentially more frequent, faster, greener trains running on a better and cleaner, more reliable railway. So this means electrification of the route. It means upgrade of the track, expansion of capacity. And so we're covering 70 miles of track, 25 stations. Within that is also six tunnels uh, and, as you see, 29 level crossings. And what this means is we have an impact on an absolutely huge area of the country and millions and millions of people and just as a comment uh, gmcvo are our wonderful partners who are delivering this you might see the greater manchester in the name but just to be clear the program covers the entirety of the route outside of greater manchester into west yorkshire and into north yorkshire as well um so we've got some pretty bold objectives um as a program um, but we also know that we have um, kind of a huge potential to impact the lives of those across the route. So if you just go to the next slide. And in order to, to measure that, um, we, we've created a strategy for sustainability. Now, we've had a strategy in place well back from before 2019. But last year, we, uh, we reinvigorated that strategy to be called our guiding compass. And our guiding compass looks at northern jobs. So it's looking at creating jobs, skills, training, working with local businesses, working with SMEs, enhanced environment. That's the carbon reduced from having electric chains. That's making sure that the amount of carbon that we um, use when constructing or we kind of, should have regenerating and renovating this track, looking at biodiversity, um, looking at spaces and places. Satisfied customer, which is about accessibility. Um, it's about customer experience. Um, it's about step-free access, safety and security. And then last not least, working with our communities, which is looking at, you know, kind of working with schools, looking with local community groups, volunteering, regenerating space and places again. Um, and so if you look at that QR code, um, you'll be able to kind of find our strategy online. You can also go to trupgrade.co.uk, always catches me out, for a bit more information, but there's also links within the GMCVO website and some of the literature you would have received that can kind of take you to, to that. But we've got a bold ambition to use this as a way of providing um, jobs, better environment, better experience and engaging communities right the way from Manchester through to York. Now, as part of this strategy, um, we've got lots of individual targets and objectives that sit beneath that. And some of those we're doing very well upon. Some of those we identified that you know, maybe there are areas for us to improve. So if I can just ask you to the, the next, I think my final slide is in order to, to look at two of our key objectives, which is to be a catalyst to regenerate um, or enhance spaces and places along the route and to provide opportunities for us to get involved directly with those communities. Um, we've secured what we hope to be the first round of funding for a TRU community fund. And the objective of this fund is to um, provide grants to community organizations across the core route, but also some of our diversionary routes around Calder Valley um, and other places that escape me at this moment in time, but again, available on the, the map to kind of engage with organizations on the ground that are working with the community in ways that aligns with some or all of our strategy um, for sustainability so that we can live 
and work towards these objectives of regeneration and involvement within our community. Um, and with that, uh, we kind of generated this program. We've kind of highlighted the kind of areas of focus that need to be in there and then um, handed over to our wonderful partners, GMCVO, who have designed this fund on our behalf and will manage that to make sure that we can distribute funding this year and hopefully beyond, uh, but that's not guaranteed at this stage, um, to uh, make a real difference um, in our communities uh, in a way that um, connects people to, to our railway line. Um, and with that, I'll hand back to, I think it's Helen, uh, who'll take the next slide. I know it's me. Vicky, sorry, Vicky. Sorry. Right. So yeah, I'm just going to take you through sort of the application process itself. So I think just to note that this, we have two, we have small grants and medium grants, and these are two separate processes with separate links for each. So for the small grants, we're launching next Monday and Monday the 5th of August. So when you um, when it launches, you receive a link to the inquiry form. The inquiry form is just sort of a very brief form with a couple of questions and sort of your organisation details and some questions regarding the eligibility criteria, which we'll cover later in the event. So once you have completed the inquiry form, you will then receive a, a link to the application form. The application form is a bit more of an in-depth questions about your project. Um, so the application form is a unique link to your organisation. So we do ask you do not share this with anyone else. The deadline to complete the application form is Monday the 16th of September. And then you should expect decisions for the small grants end of the week, Friday the 11th of October. And then for the median grants, before we launch the median grants, there is another event, some this one. So that one will take place on Thursday, the 15th of August, 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. on Zoom. We will then be launching the median grants on Monday, the 19th of August. Uh, so this again, you'll get the inquiry form link once this launches. Uh, once you have completed that, you receive your unique application form link. Uh, the deadline for that one is 12 p.m. on Monday, the 30th of September. And you expect to hear about decisions made for the median grants on the end of the week, Friday, the 25th of October. Um, please note for um these for your projects, we do expect quite a quick start, so sort of around sort of the late October, early November, but we can be quite flexible around this. But all project delivery must be complete by January of 2027. Now I'll go on to talk a bit more about how much you can apply for. Um, so the small grants, you're looking at a minimum of £1,000 to a maximum of £5,000. Um, so once, if you're successful, you will receive uh, this payment within 30 days of signing up for, for our grant agreement and providing satisfactory due diligence documents. So the grants round itself as total is £87,500 and we expect to fund between 17 and 22 projects. The median grants round is a minimum of £5,000 well, it applies to a maximum of £20,000. Uh, for that one, you will receive 75% of the grant payment when you have um, signed up for the grant agreement and you've got the satisfactory due diligence documents. We have the satisfactory due diligence documents. Um, you will then receive the remaining 25% halfway through the product delivery uh, based on sort of satisfactory monitoring, case studies and the progress on your delivery plan. The median's grants round is a total again of eighty-seven and a half thousand pounds, and we expect to fund between four and six projects. And um, these projects will be across the entirety of the true core and divisionary route. Um, and you can apply for both the medium and small grants, uh, but the grant funding must be for discrete projects, not be co-funded, or be an existing project continuation. Uh, I can see there's a hand up, but I think we're just asking that people just pop any questions they have in the comments, and we'll do them all at the end. I think that's it. And then I'll pass back over to Helen for now. Thank you, Vicky. Um, okay, so I'm just going to go through the eligibility, um, which will all be on that form that 
um, Vicky discussed. So you have to be a not-for-profit organisation. So there'll be a list to, it'll be a drop-down list on the application form. So registered charities, fully constituted club associations or trusts, uh, local education authorities, foundation schools, voluntary aided or controlled schools, independent schools or colleges, a registered community interest company, um, Institute of Further Education, Academy Schools, Institute of Higher Education, which includes universities, a community benefit society or cooperative societies, a registered society or a tenants or residents association. Um, we'll also ask for your relevant governing documents. So, for example, with a, a club or an association, we'd be asking for um, your constitution with a minimum of three trustees signing it and a dissolution clause for your registered charity or community interest company etc we'd just be asking for your charity number and then we can we can check and any due diligence that's required um, the second part of the eligibility is that you're delivering in a place or places which are in the 50% most deprived areas in England. Um, so to do that, we provide a link, which is the find your postcode link. You go onto there, you pop your postcode in of where you'll be delivering. Um, so you could be delivering somewhere different than where you're based. So you might be based further out of that, but if you're delivering within um, somewhere that is within the 50% of most deprived, you would be putting that postcode in. And then it gives you a couple of figures and we ask you to pop those figures onto the app application form. You also have to be delivering the project within five miles of the TRU core or formal um, divisionary routes. So we've created um, a map where you can check that and um, to check that you are within that five miles and the project um, must align with one or more of the four pillars which make up the TRU sustainability and social value strategy which Jamie talked about earlier um, I will pop up a slide about that in a minute but it as an overview you're looking at northern jobs enhancing the environment satisfied customer and working with communities um, and within that we're really kind of looking for those most important bits are those places spaces and people that as, as a general overview of what we're looking for. Um, next slide, Vicky, please. So yeah, there's a there's a, a, a interactive map that we've created. So you can click on the link and then you can put your postcode in and it will show you where you are in relation to that um, route and whether you're within that five mile boundary so that you can decide whether you're eligible to apply or not. Uh, next one. So yeah, the project's aligning with one or more of the following four pillars. So there's just a little bit around um, the northern jobs being things like job opportunities and upskilling, um, experience, work experience for local people um, and in areas of high deprivation and supporting underrepresented groups, um, enhancing the environment, things like restoring nature, adopting circular economy principles and supporting sustain sustainability. Um, satisfied customers, which is that a safe, reliable and accessible railway um, or station facilities and the environment in the immediate vicinity. And working with our communities, so investing in well-being, education and community spaces and green spaces. Um, so, yeah, as, as I said earlier, applications focusing on those places. So you, your local places and spaces with local people who are within underrepresented groups in areas of high deprivation are kind of the, the things that we're looking for um, within the application forms. Next slide. So there's a couple of additional um, criteria on the application form, which I, I don't Think I need to go into too much detail with but we just asked for the area you plan to deliver the project in um, so when we're looking at the split of the funding it, we will look at splitting it across the route as much as we can and um, so it's we're really key that we know where you're delivering your project so that we can make sure that that funding has a good a good split across the route we also ask for your annual income. The only reason we're asking for that is that we want to make sure that smaller grassroots charities and organisations are applying and also being funded. Um, we're really keen on that, having 
you you involved as well as bigger charities, um, etc. So we asked for the bank account in the name of the organisation with two signatories um, so that we can pay you if successful. Um, we asked for, uh, we just basically asked you to tell us that you have that or will have that by the time the project is started rather than asking for exact details at this stage. We ask that you have a safeguarding policy and a named safeguarding officer and adequate public and employee insurance, along with asking that no current employees of Network Rail or the TRU Enterprise are operating within your managing or governing structures um, of the applicant's organisation. Next slide. Over to Vicky. Yeah, so when we're looking at sort of what the funding can be used for, we just say that the funding must be used for discrete projects not be co-funded or be an existing project continuation. Um, it can be used uh, to cover costs within the organisations. So you're looking at things like staff time or equipment, room hire materials. Uh, we do expect though those to be good value for money and the costs are directly linked to the project you will discuss in your application form. Um, the funding though cannot be used to employ staff. Okay. Pass over to Helen for application. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm going to take you through the application questions. It's a fairly short application form. We at GMCVO adopt the Institute for Voluntary Action on Research, which is I of our commitments to be open and trusting grant makers and making that process really clear. So it means that we try and ask really relevant questions and we only collect information that we must have to make funding decisions. And we try and really explain our priorities clearly and have a supportive approach to applying. So I'm hoping that in going through these questions with some guidance, um, which will also be pu published um, on Monday when the round goes live, that you'll be able to get the information now, but also refer back to it if you need a little bit of extra support in doing that. And also you can always drop us an email if there's anything that needs clearing and we've got the option to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Um, so for both the small and medium grants round, the first one to eight questions are the same. From then on after question eight, there's one additional question for the small grants round and three additional for the medium grants round. So I'll take you through each one. Um, and just to note that you can apply for both, but we both the small and the medium grants, but we would only um you would only be be funded a maximum of twenty thousand because we re we recognize that it it's a nice um um across and nice involved so we kind of put that maximum of twenty thousand in there and um, just to to hopefully help us do that okay so I'm going to go over the questions. So the first question um, is just asking for an overview of what your organisation does and who it impacts. So we're really just looking for a brief overview about the work your organisation does. And you could talk about your social mission, the services you have or your service users within that question. Um, question two is please tell us what your project is and how it aligns to those four pillars. Um, so really in this answer, we're looking for a really clear to the point description of your project that you're going to be delivering as if we've got no idea what that project is because we don't have any idea what that project is. So it's explaining each step of the way of what you're going to be doing. Um, what are the key project outcomes? You could talk about um, who will benefit and where those people are based. Um, you could discuss which of the, well, we would be looking for you to discuss which of the TIU pillars the project outcome aligns with. So you don't need to cover them all, but please it do include any that your project does align to. Um, so thinking that projects have a start and an end date with delivery in between in your answer, just please let us know what those key dates are and where your project will take place. You may include um, in, in structuring your answer what the project is, what you will deliver, what participants, staffs or volunteers are taking part in, how the project will be delivered and when delivery will take place. 
Um, also how the TIU group could be involved in the project to deliver volunteering hours, um, which is a question a little bit more specific around that later on, but you might mention it here. Um, and just remembering that any costs in your budget must be mentioned in your project details. So for example, if you requested for uh, costs for craft materials, we would expect to see a craft session mentioned in this um, question. Okay, so going on to question three. So asking you to outline how you've identified the need for this project. So we're really looking for you to describe any consultations, surveys or focus groups with local people, groups or organisations that the project is going to impact and about the activities due to take place. Um, you could talk about any um, statistical evidence that you're aware of or any other research that's been done to support the need for your project with, with this community that you're going to be working with or in this space or place. Um, okay, question four. So we're asking you to describe your past experience of working within the local community or communities and how you've engaged with the local communities in the co-design of this project. Um, so this may include communities identity, experience and our place. So we would look in for you to outline your experience, provide any examples of successful previous projects working with local communities you expect to work within and how you've engaged people in the local communities within your project or how they use the place and space at the end of that project. Is this something that you have delivered previously or have delivered something similar, which was successful lo for local community spaces, places, or the local people and communities? Um, and just really looking for how have local people been consulted and engaged with in the design in the project. Next question, next slide, sorry, question five. So we're asking in question five, what the impact of the grant on your organisation, the place, space or people involved, as well as the wider local community or communities. So will your organisation continue to work with the people you've engaged with, um, the space you've improved or the place is more accessible? Any intended impacts such as the wider community benefiting from the project or gaining access to a space or place that's previously been Unaccess inaccessible. Um, so it's really about the legacy and sustainability of your project once, once it's come to an end. And question six is around what volunteering opportunities will project or other projects within your organisation will create for the wider TIU group to be able to take part in. Um, so the volunteering could take place within your project that you're applying for the funding for or it could just be within your wider organization if it isn't the right fit for the project so you could mention a range of dates or months in that you might have in mind for when volunteers could be involved in the activity um and if if this cannot take place there needs to be an explanation as to why that is for example if you are a small organization that works with women seeking refuge then it may not be appropriate to have volunteers then that would be fine we'd just be looking for that explanation there um seven and eight are just that start date and end date so the start date we are looking for october november start dates ideally however if that is a problem just let us know what what would feel more reasonable because we we could ex extend that into early next year and with the end date as vicky said earlier January 2027 is is the end date um, so we're really realistic in our approach that projects sometimes have unforeseen challenges along that delivery and this answer might be a best guess estimate of an end date but if you bear in mind that January 2027 you could just take that into account when calculating your end date. So the next question, question nine, is in relation to the small grants only, is just asking how much you're applying for and a detailed explanation of each costs. So we wouldn't be asking in the small grants round for a budget breakdown. We're just asking for a breakdown of cost. So you'd put the total you're applying for and then you could do up to five items. So item cost one, a little bit of a breakdown and a little bit of a description. Um, 
so yeah you can add up to five of those and just making sure that as far as is reasonably possible that the figures are actuals and not estimates so just so that this can ensure that you can deliver your project um, and making sure that that breakdown adds up to the total grant amount requested next one please vicky so for the medium grants um, this is where the question is slightly different. For the medium grants, we would be asking in question nine for a project delivery plan with the key milestones of the project per quarter of, of the length of your project. So you can upload that as a Word document, an Excel document or a PDF document, whichever works best for you. Um, and also, I guess, within this question nine, it kind of links to question one for the medium grants, so uh, question two, sorry, in terms of describing what your project is. So you may answer those questions together and then pick out bits of your project delivery to answer question two or pick out bits of question two to influence your project delivery plan. Um, we also ask how much you're applying for. So that minimum being £5,000 upwards to the maximum of £20,000. Um, and then we would ask for you to attach a full detailed budget to explain the spend breakdown um, just making sure that it adds up to the total that you're applying for and again you can upload that in word excel or pdf um, and that would just be the budget for this project so you wouldn't need to take into any other um, costs within your organization it would just be this project okay next slide so just wanted to add a slide about monitoring. Um, so successful applicants will be expected to comply with project monitoring and reporting processes, and we will provide guidance for that. Um, in terms of case study and photographs, the TIU team are really keen to get lots of case studies and have lots of photographs of the projects and the project development and that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to wait until the end of the project when it's all finished and wonderful it can be that along along the way those smaller little wins and little um steps that you make towards progress um, and they will be used for internal evaluation and impact as well as externally for marketing and social media just to make you aware of that um, we'd also expect a really good line of communication with GMCVO and or the TIU team to enable the volunteering hours to be arranged. Um, and with the medium grants, we might require to attend quarterly progress update meetings with ourselves if required. And with the medium grants as well, there is likely to be re um, a quarterly report reporting required to build case studies and photographs and um, the finer detail of that hasn't all been decided as yet but we do know that there will we will want to do some level of reporting along the way um, and it's just being open to that with the guidance that we will provide 